What is going on, gunfighters? So yesterday, did a trip to the range. And a lot of times I focus on handgun for good reason. Handgun is probably what I'm going to have on me in an emergency because that's what I carry on my hip day to day. Also, I've seen quite frequently reiterated in my training and experience, if you are an exceptional handgun shooter, you will be a good rifle shooter. You can be a good rifle shooter and be a horrible pistol shot. So, that being said, normally when I drive fire and go to the range, the majority is handgun. But you can get too lopsided on that too. So yesterday I went out, and as I have espoused the virtues many times of the shotgun, my one long gun for the apocalypse, we all probably play that thought experiment in our mind. If we could only have the one gun, a lot of people would say a 22, a lot of people would say an AR. I would choose a shotgun. And for that reason, I thought it was a good time to go out and run some shotguns. I ran a couple of shotguns yesterday, my two main go-tos. For a long time, there was no debate that my one and only go-to shotgun was going to be the Benelli M2. I've run Benelli's for a lot of years. I really like them. And then I got a Mossberg 590S. And I got it. The main reason I got it was the ability to run short shells and the ease of and availability of mounting optics on it. Because I saw what a big difference the red dot did on a handgun, and I thought it could do something similar for a shotgun. Anyway, so now I have the two, and I've been torn for a while between the two on which one to pick. For my one gun, for when the peanut butter and chocolate hits the fan. I'll get into that later, keep you in suspense. But that's going to be the day's episode, yesterday's range training and lessons learned there. So with that, I just want to sincerely thank everybody that supports the show. And I want to say that I am humbled and blessed that anybody listens at all. With that, I'm going to plug in the bio. If you want to skip it, you can skip around 3 minutes and 45 seconds. Who am I? A question we should all ask ourselves. I am, first and foremost, a servant of God made in his very own image, a follower of Jesus Christ, a simple man called by God to the Great Commission to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Next, a little bit about my background and what God has allowed me to do and blessed me to do in life. Grew up what most would consider very poor in the backwoods of the southeastern and mid-Atlantic United States, hunting and fishing. Joined the Marine Corps at 17. Did a couple of combat tours in Iraq. So a decorated Marine Corps combat veteran. Infantry assaultman. After the combat tours... I was an urban warfare instructor for the United States Marine Corps under Mojave Viper. I also served in the U.S. Army, both full-time and part-time National Guard. Also a veteran of law enforcement. I served with LAPD. I was a sworn peace officer, a cop for LAPD. I worked regular patrol assignments and more specialized assignments. One of those more specialized assignments was warrant service, fugitive recovery. Also had some other law enforcement roles. I am an FBI certified firearms instructor and been certified by another three-letter government agency in a lot of firearms and training things. I've also been a private contractor, worked in the private sector, Pertaining to tactics and gunfighting and protecting America from enemies foreign and domestic. I served as the commander of a tactical team to stop active shooters in a large metropolitan area. That was our primary mission, to stop active shooters, which sadly are a thing in America today. I've also been blessed to do quite a bit of competition shooting Started my first formal competitions even before joining the Marine Corps at 17. 
I had won more shooting competitions than I can remember. I have competed in all manner of disciplines in shooting. I've been blessed to be a state rifle and pistol champion, West Coast regional champion. Like I said, been blessed to win more shooting competitions than I can remember. I mentioned hunting. I've hunted to put meat on the table starting when I was a child. I've also been a professional big game hunter and guide, hunting and slaying all manner of beast. And I don't apologize for that. Humbled to be the host of three podcasts. Simple Man Sermons, Alpha Male Podcast, and Gunfighter Life. Obviously, as things not mentioned, I've been blessed to do many other things. But, again, first and foremost, I'm a servant. A servant of God, a believer and follower of the Bible, the Word, Jesus Christ. And I don't apologize for that. With that, let's transition into today's topic. Why I choose the shotgun as my one go-to gun, if I could only have one long gun, has been expanded on in other episodes. If you want to see that, just type in gunfighter life and shotgun, and you'll see a cornucopia of information on the shotgun on here. But this episode, having that already been established, as well as alluded to in the beginning, I went out with the intent of evaluating not just based on emotion or what looked cooler or whatever, but fairly scientifically for me, an objective look on which one would be the better shotgun go-to if I could only pick one. The shotguns in question. Now my go-to for a long time, a Benelli M2. And there's a long story on how I settled on the Benelli M2, but in days of yore I had the Benelli M1 Super 90 and the Benelli M4. I settled on the Benelli M2 for good reasons done a whole episode on the Benelli M2. You can go listen to that. My Benelli M2 is set up with interchangeable chokes, 18-inch barrel with rifle sights. Not your traditional sporting shotgun. Not even your traditional, let's say, tactical shotgun. Kind of a custom Benelli M2. Extended magazine tube. A good sling. A good side saddle. Boba Fett style spray paint camo on it. And then we get to the other option that I settled on, which is the Mossberg 590S Vang Comp. It came with quite good peep sights on it. I replaced the rear peep sight with the XS Systems peep sight, not because there was anything wrong with the peep sight that came on it, but because that sight system took up most of the rail which kind of defeated the purpose of having the rail. The XS sight system gives you the ability to mount an optic forward of the rail. And again, one of the reasons I got this gun was because I wanted to evaluate red dots on a shotgun. So it's got the XS, as in the capital letter X and the capital letter S sighting systems peep sight on the rear. So iron sights right off the bat, as far as sights go, are going to be better. Also, I put a red dot on a burst fast fire. Now I mentioned Van Comp. If you don't know, they back bore a barrel. They make it a little bit bigger than normal. And they also put porting on the top of the barrel. And I can say I do believe that it makes it a much softer shooting and faster gun. That may have something to do with the surprising results I'll talk about later. So those are the guns we're going to talk about. I will do a brief aside and say that it saddens me because I probably have the most professional experience running a Remington 870. And I bought one when they first started coming back out with them because I have one and I let it go and I really wish that I had one. So I bought one when they started making them again and it just sucks. There's no other way to put it. I put a bunch of time and effort and a little bit of money into making it quasi-reliable. When I buy a brand new 870 from Remington and it doesn't run, I I can't in good conscience recommend it and I'm not going to in good conscience trust my life to it sadly. So that was off the table. That being said, if you can find an older Remington 870 Police Magnum with rifle sights, that also would be a good choice. Back to the evaluation at hand. So I went, because I wanted to evaluate this scientifically, 
for me which one was better. So I did a couple of drills. I did an accuracy drill. No surprise that Benelli came out on top. I shot at 50 yards. The Mossberg 500 gave something akin to fist size groups. Or it's a 590. 590S gave something akin to fist size groups at that distance, which is respectable. The Beretta, no surprise, as with all the Berettas I've had in the past, was crazy accurate. You're talking inch and a half ish groups at 50 yards. And again, we're talking standing with just what I would call Walmart slugs. You're one of my favorite Federal High Shock rifled slugs. It shot very, very well. So Nod has to go to the Benelli there, and that's no surprise. Next, I started doing some speed trials. Now, if I was just pure speed with no accuracy, let's say, just emptying these guns into a dirt berm at three yards, there's no question that the Benelli would be faster, right? Because it's a semi-automatic. However, I don't think that's a real and practical test. Because it's not an AR, right? You don't have to double tap. It's not a 9mm. You don't have to do Mozambique drills with buckshot. That's not a thing for a reason. It's a thing with a 9mm handgun because they don't have a good propensity to stop with one shot. 12 gauge with buckshot, if you get anything other than a very marginal hit, it's a one shot and done thing. So my ability to shoot the same target at really close ranges multiple times is kind of a moot point for me. If I do have to do something, it's going to be on multiple targets or it's going to be a target farther away. To test this, I chose to get a small target about the size of an open hand. It's one of those little resealable, whatever they are, kind of plastic, rubbery, yellow targets that I could simply set on the ground at 25 yards. And the test was how quickly could I hit that target at 25 yards three round, three times. So three times in a row at 25 yards. I'm not going to bore you with reading off decimal points and numbers and all those kind of things. I'll try and post those for the patrons so they can see it. In fact, I'll post it for everybody on Patreon. So if you want to see it, just go to Patreon and check that out. It'll be open to the public. You can go to the Patreon page via goodshepherdtraining.com. But I'll spare you the laborious decimal point details here. But what I will say is that it was surprising because I had to reacquire the target because the recoil took me off target every time. The difference in speed between the Benelli and the Mossberg 590 was negligible. If I took my very fastest times, you're talking maybe a tenth of a second, a little bit more than a tenth of a second with with three shots total between the semi-auto Benelli and the Mossberg 590S Van Comp, you might have to pump the 590S. But since the recoil took me off target and I had to reacquire it, I couldn't just press the trigger three times or I would miss. I could do that while reacquiring the target. So yeah, the Benelli was maybe marginally faster, but you're talking a tenth of a second. And that's cherry picking the very fastest time from the very fastest time. If I average them all together, the difference would, I think, be within the margin of error. That was surprising to me because I clearly thought the Benelli was going to win that. Next, I did an evaluation on a very practical thing because a shotgun, as you know, had a limited capacity. So the drill was put one round in the gun and one round in the side saddle, simulating shooting the gun empty and having to reload one round in an emergency from the side saddle. And I did that several times. And again, I'll spare you the laborious details of decimal points and numbers. But on this one, the Benelli really does come out on top, and there's an obvious reason for that, right? I have to, on the Mossberg 590S, which is a pump, I have to fire, run the action back, take my hand off the pump, grab the round from the side saddle, and throw it in the carrier, and run the action back forward, and then fire. With the Benelli, I have to fire, grab the round, throw it in the chamber, hit a button, and fire again. So there is no surprise that it was faster for me to do that on the Benelli than the Mossberg by quite a bit. So the Benelli won that one. I had intended to run buckshot and do buckshot evaluations on that, but I didn't get to it, but I've done that in the past. 
I'd say both of those I would consider very effective with the right buckshot that that gun shoots well, and it was different for both guns, surprisingly, but easily out to 50 yards. And what was really surprising in past testing was the reason I got the Mossberg 590S was its ability to cycle the short shells, just like any other shell. So if you don't know the short shells, most shotguns will shoot three inch and two and three quarter inch shells, two and three quarter inch shells being standard. Most modern shotguns can also handle the three inch shells, a lot of times called a Magnum. But the Mossberg 590S, S for short, can also fire the short shells, which are an inch and three quarter, which means you generally get double the capacity on those or somewhere about that as you would get on normal shells, which is a big deal. One of the big disadvantages of the shotgun is that you can carry less ammo with it than you can with other platforms because the ammo is bigger. This doesn't completely negate that, but it certainly makes it easier to carry more ammo. Not only is it lighter, but it's smaller and takes up less space in a pack in your pocket, whatever the case may be. And surprisingly, in buckshot evaluations and firing full power, let's say traditional buckshot loads and those short buckshot loads at 50 yards, I got the exact same amount of pellets on target with the short shells, which blew my mind, right? Because the short shells, my go-to load, if you've listened for any length of time, you know that I like number four buck, both for hunting big game and for defense. I have used it since youth very effectively. I like number four buck. And although the full-size shells hold quite a bit more pellets, the number of pellets on let's say the kill zone of a target at 50 yards was exactly the same with the short shells and with the traditional shells. And that surprised me. Something unique and very cool to the short shells and at least in that Mossberg 590S Van Comp. And Van Comp prides itself not only in lowering the recoil of the 12 gauge, which is quite formidable, but also with better groupings of buckshot. That's one of the main reasons they do their barrels like that is to give better groupings with buckshot. And buckshot, if you don't know, behaves or can behave quite differently than traditional birdshot. I should do a quick note. When I was doing the speed test, I was just running regular traditional two and three quarter inch federal birdshot for the tests. So it was the same for both platforms. And I don't think that the Van Comp system is just marketing on that note because even though the Benelli is semi-auto and usually semi-autos have less felt recoil than pump actions, even running the same ammo, I do think that the Van Comp recoiled less for me than the Benelli M2, which was a big surprise. And even though I had to run the action since the recoil was less, I think that really aided in the speed at which I was able to shoot those targets and why there was almost no time difference. Again, maybe none. If I had shot a lot more rounds, it may have come out even. But how the time difference was so compatible between a pump and a semi-auto. Results may have been far different with just a regular Mossberg 500. So all that being said, what were the big lessons learned? Well, surprisingly, some of the biggest lessons learned from yesterday's range session had nothing to do with what I was looking for. The biggest lesson was how much difference training and practice makes. And I knew this, but it was a good slap in the face and a reminder that training makes so much bigger difference than the difference of one platform or another. Remember I said that my difference in times, even between the pump action and semi-auto at 25 yards, repeated shots was in tenths of a second? Well, the difference in time between my first run being out of practice and my last run was about two seconds. So the difference between platforms was a tenth of a second, and the difference between my unpracticed run and my well-practiced run on both platforms was about two seconds. Training is much more important than platform. I'll say that again. Training is much more important than platform. And again, I knew this, but as I said in the beginning, I generally dry fire with my handgun, which I still think I should do the majority of my dry fire with a handgun. But it shows me that I should do a little bit more dry fire with a shotgun, especially if it is my go-to 
you know, boogalicious peanut butter and chocolate hitting the fan choice. I should probably dry fire and train with it more. Again, if you want to see those times of things, I will try and post that up on the Patreon page. Should be a link in the show notes or just go to goodshepherdtraining.com. I'll try and post some pictures from the range session as well. The other big lesson that I learned, and I guess didn't learn but relearned, maybe a better thing, is why the AR-15 is so popular. And it's not because it's better or more effective. Because it's so much more fun to shoot. You see, after I shot the shotguns, I went to my go-to AR, which stays behind the front seat of the car in my bug-out bag. Don't worry, my shotgun is back there too. In general, if I have no other info, the shotgun is my go-to, you know, end-of-the-world tool. For a lot of applications, the AR gets the nod for good reason, right? I shot the AR afterwards to make sure and confirm that it was still sighted in to give it a good cleaning and wipe down and all that good stuff. And just how much more fun it is to shoot an AR-15 than a shotgun. I mean, go do a range session, go do a big chunk of the day shooting shotgun, especially slugs, and then switch to an AR. Which is one of the big reasons I think ARs are more popular. They're more Instagrammy, they're more fun, they're more memey, they look cool, but they're not by any means more effective, especially inside the kind of distances inside, let's say, 150 yards for most practical defensive situations. But they are a lot more fun to shoot, which is probably one of the big reasons they are so popular today. It reminds me of the first time I shot one, and it was when I was in high school. I was familiar with shotguns and hunting rifles and and things like that, and shooting what I would consider, quote-unquote, more traditional guns. And I shot this, and it was an actual M16, as it was a military range. And I remember just the buffer spring clinging and clanging back and forth, and like very minimal recoil, and just being bewildered that this was a gun. It was just so different than most traditional other guns that I was used to. Anyway, I think that's a big reason and a big lesson we learned from yesterday is the why ARs are so popular. And it has nothing to do with their effectiveness. They certainly have their place. They're certainly great battlefield and assault rifle weapons, and they're good in that role. I think a big reason why they're popular, no surprise, is because they're a lot of fun. And they have very little recoil, and they are easy to shoot. So those are the big lessons learned. So what you've all been waiting for with bated breath, probably not, is which one would I choose? And I'm going to say after yesterday's range session, I'm very blessed to have both shotguns. I think for my one shotgun, for hunting, for self-defense, for everything, without the complete peanut butter and chocolate hitting the fan is going to remain the Benelli M2. But for my truck shotgun, and for if peanut butter and chocolate does hit the fan, like I can have one long gun, because that's what I can carry, and I can have a handgun, I'm actually going to surprisingly choose the Mossberg 590S. And that is for a few reasons. Its accuracy is sufficient, its speed is sufficient. I do give up something in that I can't fire it one-handed like I can with a Benelli. So if I get shot in the arm or I'm carrying a child or dragging my wife or somebody else, I give up the ability to do that. But I assume I'll be able to have a handgun as well, which I could switch to that. But that is a big advantage to the semi-auto. You, you know, again, if I was just emptying both guns at three yards, the semi-auto Benelli would almost certainly get the nod. But I can't foresee any time I'd ever have to do that. If I have a well-aimed shot and I hit him with a buckshot, then that should be the end of my shooting on that target. If it was a poor hit with buckshot, I'm going to have to re-aim anyway because I obviously wasn't aiming in the right place anyway. And, you know, double taps, Mozambique drills are not a thing with a 12-gauge shotgun. They're a thing with less effective rounds like AR rounds and 9mm handgun rounds. Notice, don't get mad, I didn't say ineffective, I said less effective. The effectiveness of shotgun ammunition with buckshot and slugs is one of the reasons it's my go-to long gun, not to mention his versatility. And on the versatility, one of the big reasons that I would choose the 590S for a peanut butter and chocolate shotgun is the ability, one of the big reasons I got it, the ability to fire short shells. I can carry a lot more of those short shells. In fact, I have it in a scabbard 
with two straps that I can just throw on my back or it's a molly scabbard so I can attach it to my bug out bag should I wish. But I can carry a lot more of those short shells and they come in birdshot, they come in buckshot, and they come in slugs. Now, I'm still going to want some full powered rounds for certain applications. But if I'm just talking about birdshot, if I'm shooting you know, doves and quail and things like that, then those short shells will do just fine. Again, if it's end of the world apocalypse, I've talked about this before, I'm not worried about sporting like we consider modern hunting. I'm not going to try and shoot doves out of the air. I'm going to wait till they land and shoot them on the ground, just like a duck or anything else. Ammo is probably going to be a precious commodity. So those short shells and the ability to carry and shoot those short shells is a big advantage and the ability to carry more of them. Especially, and that's why it's my truck gun, you know, you can you should consider any system at some point degrading into man portable. And if I have to have a man portable long gun, I can carry more of those short shells than I can carry traditional shells, both in size and weight. And I know I said it has a red dot on it, but don't worry, I saw I thought that out. It has a pretty quick detach system on that burst fast fire. When I run out of battery or batteries, I can literally just twist that off and throw it away. And I still have a good excess peep sight on there, which is a fine sighting system. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this tale of two shotguns. Please, sir, can I have some more? Well, if you like this kind of content, if you like shotgun stuff or the gun comparison videos, let me know. I might do some more of them. That's going to bring us to the tactical tip of the day. I generally don't say if you don't have something that you're wrong, but if you have a shotgun you don't have a side saddle on it, I can't imagine why you wouldn't. Let me put it that way. Side saddles you can get usually for less than $5. I'm literally talking about the black slip-on side saddles that carry extra shotgun shells. They are so easy and so handy, and they're not expensive. And one of the limiting factors of a shotgun is the amount of rounds you can have in the gun. And one of the big advantages of the shotgun is the versatility of different kinds of ammo. Well, with one of those side saddles, if it runs dry, just like I practiced yesterday, you can grab a round out of there, literally throw it in the chamber, and do what you have to do to get the gun back in action, and fire another round. And you can do that one after another after another. And it's not as fast as running the gun normal, but it's far faster than having to fish ammo out of some other source. And again, they're so cheap. Plus, for hunting and other applications, or even tactical applications, if I have my shotgun loaded with number four buck, and I want a slug, I can run that action back, pump or semi-auto carefully, take that round out, load in a slug from the side saddle. A little tactical tip on top of a tactical tip is I like to run my slugs upside down. I do my emergency reload generally the right side up so I can push them up, throw them in the chamber. It's a little bit faster. If it's a slug, I know to reach underneath and I can literally tactily, tactily, I can feel, right? I can feel the difference. I can feel that that's a slug even if I can't see it and I can throw the slug in the chamber. Anyway, that's your tactical tip of the day. Hopefully what you've been waiting for even more than the conclusion of the episode and the tactical tip is the tactical verse of the day. Sometimes, whether in a tactical situation or in hunting, the best recipe for success is a hard pill to swallow for a lot of alpha males, and that is one of patience. Today's tactical verse of the day is Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, and set my feet on a rock, and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord, and put their trust in Him. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. That's Psalm 40. Thanks for listening. I am blessed and humbled. Have a blessed day, gunfighters.